I'm really hot. channel if you are new here if you are new my name is Elise and this is my boyfriend Sean yeah today we've had a bit of a building renovation-y type day so we've kind of just sat down as we are so please don't judge how we are looking we know we are not looking our best me I'm not looking my <laughs> best speak <laughs> yourself I'm all right so yeah today we just thought we'd quickly talk about some things that we've learned whilst we bought a house we did do a house video a few weeks ago and it was quite well received from you guys we spoke about how we bought our first home the first time buyer process so yeah do go check out that video if you want to give it a watch but yeah today we just thought we'd talk about 10 things that we've learned since buying a house so okay so point number one we've written down that we'd probably research our solicitor the company that <coughs> built the house obviously recommended us with a solicitor because they kind of use them for all of the other houses on the development and yeah i think for us personally i think we probably wish we had just researched that a little bit more yeah we jumped in a bit didn't we yeah i mean it takes two seconds of research and if we did because we researched afterwards when we were already signed up you know plenty of bad reviews a lot of people saying don't use them don't go here yeah so i think researching a little bit you know it doesn't take long but it can save you a lot of pain but also price wise i mean we just sort of you know we don't know anything about solicitor fees we just assumed it was okay. it, it was all right basically yeah you could have researched and maybe got the price down a little bit i think quite a common theme i wish we had done our research we probably would have gone to somewhere else again your friends and family are going to be your like best friends for that kind of thing because obviously they've more than likely bought a house themselves they probably would have already used someone so board it takes you know one little review we've found out that you have to chase them for everything we would have realised straight away, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, how much time do you think we wasted when we were chasing? At least, at least a month, yeah. month and a half. Yeah, we did a lot of chasing. And that's probably another thing I would say. And like maybe all your <clears throat> documents rather than back and forth with like emails with the solicitor. I'd probably say if you can hand the documents to the office themselves, to that person, it'll probably make that whole process a lot quicker. Because there were so many times the solicitor said to us, have you sent that form? And we're like, yeah. And they're like, yeah, it's haven't got it. And, and you wait and it just delays everything by like two or three weeks before they even tell you that, oh, they didn't receive it. Delayed yeah, our definitely. process a little it's bit such more. a get out clause, isn't it? When, yeah. you know, if you sent that document, yeah, we sent it a couple of weeks ago. Oh, I haven't received it. Can you send yeah. it again? You send it to the exact same email yeah. and all of a sudden it, it appears and they get it. So Shock. that was a good point. Yeah, because yeah. they were only down the road and you were yeah, there were. two minutes. So Which just print it off, handy. drive it in, put it right on their desk. So the second point we've said is a mortgage broker. We definitely, definitely advise that you get one. She was just a godsend. And also yeah, for our mortgage was. deals, she sent us banks that we've never even heard of before, which we did kind of touch base on this in our last video. But yeah, our mortgage broker would definitely be something we would both advise. We yeah, really enjoyed having again, that. Again, do your research. I think search for specific mortgage brokers to what type of mortgage you're looking to get. Every different type of mortgage product requires so much different specialism. So if you're getting a shared ownership mortgage, go to someone who's had that experience. Not necessarily every mortgage broker will have done every different type. You know, so a how to buy a shared ownership, for example, there might be different things. So do your research on what they specialize in. Yeah, so sure. ours, because we, we did try a few and, you know, people just couldn't help us basically because we were in a bit of a strange situation with it being a new build yeah. and the amount of deposit we had. However, she straight away said, look, I, I know someone, I know a couple of people who might be able to help. So even though it was only two, that was two more than a lot of other people. I am wearing Invisalign. I have the Invisalign braces and she advised to pay that off in one go before um, applying for the mortgage because it would just look better and help us out, which was something I never thought about doing because I was like, it's a lot of money and I thought I would have been better off having that to put towards the deposit. But actually she said, no, you'll be better off paying that. So again, that's something we would never have known without having a mortgage broker. So It's yeah. because, um, I mean, Again, we're not, you know, we're not mortgage brokers, we don't know specifically, but it was something along the lines of they don't, you know, they extrapolate it out. So if you're paying £200 a month for your braces, for example, yeah. 
they don't just take into consideration that you're going to only pay that for a year and a half. They sort of put it all the way for the mortgage, yeah. I, I think is the issue. Yeah, rather than look at it like how long you're actually paying it for. Yeah, so paying yeah. that, paying those off, I mean, it raised, straight away it raised what we could have, you know, yeah. the amount that they lend us. Which is crazy because you think it instantly in your head, oh, I'm better off paying like a bigger deposit, but actually, apparently not. And again, we would never have known that without her. So yeah, definitely get a mortgage broker. Mm -hmm. And that kind of leads us on to our third point that we have written down, which is really explore if you should pay a less deposit or not. Does it really benefit you in the long run? Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, because we did a bit of the maths, didn't we? So yeah. we could have put an extra three grand on our deposit and it would have brought down our monthly bills by, yeah. you know, absolutely nothing. But then that three grand was almost, you know, like gold dust, really, when it comes to the amount of money you have to put into furnishing the place when you move in. We didn't have the extra few pennies that we had, so... Yeah, explore it. I mean, it's not always worth just putting all your money towards your deposit. You can, definitely can yeah. put it to like, better use, I'd say, at the beginning. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like with the increments as well, like to 10,000, to 15,000, to 20,000, like that's a big jump. It's a big chunk of money. But actually, the difference in paying that in a deposit, you will be really shocked, like how that's reflected in your mortgage. So just have a little look. Ask your mortgage advisor just to do some sums for you. Yeah. And you might be surprised. The next point we wanted to talk about was buildings insurance, which I completely didn't know that you actually need this before you even move into your house. So when you get your mortgage, you have to have your buildings insurance as a prerequisite before you move in. But what a lot of people don't do, uh, we almost fell in the trap, didn't we, of not getting your contents insurance. Yeah, we didn't have a clue. Because you just you just think, what's the point? You know, I'll risk it. I've spent a lot of money. A lot of money's now going out of my bank each month. You know, I, I just leave the contents insurance. Yeah, I mean, it's because it, sound, it sounds so basic and so stupid, but yeah, you'd be amazed how many guys. people don't have contents insurance. And it's just, you know, it, it works out. At, eight quid a month. And also included in the things that you should probably get sorted before you do move in is look into your broadband, look at what companies come to where your postcode is, where you're gonna be moving to and see who will come out there to provide some sort of internet because if you work from home, you're gonna need it straight away. And here where we actually are, we don't get great 3G. So the internet was kind of paramount for us to have especially with Sean working from home, so. And what people don't realize is how long it takes to set up the internet sometimes. Yeah, so it can take weeks, again, can't it? I'm I knew because I'd done it before, but when I moved into my last place, I rang up a few days before I moved in to try and sort the internet and it actually took two, three weeks. Yeah. So I was without internet for a long time. You don't realize how long these things take sometimes. So get that done nice and early. And also if you're moving, if you're retaining the internet you had at your last place, just double check that they can actually provide where you are. Oh yeah, you so, had that issue, didn't you, with mm, Yeah, so I was with Sky before and luckily we checked quite early, but Sky couldn't provide it here. So I had to get out of it. But if I didn't check that, I might have just moved in, tried to change it over, and then I had to give a month's notice. Yeah. So we could have been without internet for a month. Yeah, which would have been... Yeah, well, would have you would have been able to work. Stopped, yeah. You would have just... Yeah, froze. So yeah, there are definitely some things to consider before you move in. So definitely do look into the contents insurance, the buildings insurance, and the broadband. Another really good tip is get a joint account for your bills. Because like we... Like we touched on earlier there are a lot of bills you don't appreciate it when you when you're renting when you live with mum and dad you have your wage comes in and your rent goes out and your phone bill goes yeah. out and your gym goes out but when you move into your flat you know you've got your contents you've got your buildings insurance internet, you've got your council phone, tax your internet water. you've got all of it to have all yeah. of these things coming from you know i might set up one you might set up another different days everything coming out at different points it makes your head explode and it for me matter. it just makes me really stress out i love a list i love things being in order and that just kind of stresses me out if we could just create an account for the two of us for all of our bills to come out of one account and then he has his own money i have mine and then we just kind of transfer a set amount into that account for each month it kind of covers all of our bills also a lot of the banks do offer introductory offers so what did we get when we set up with 150 pounds 150 quid just for setting up the joint account and obviously you've got like certain requirements that each bank requires for you to set a joint account up but um, yeah, I think we got like £150 just put into the account straight away just for us to use. So to be honest, that was a big help. But we took it a little bit too far, didn't we? Because then I changed my personal bank, you changed your personal bank. Yeah, we didn't so, well, no, we made, really. about, we made about £500 that month just on... <laughs> we did. Just on moving banks. We should, have done. we should do that every month. It was 150 <laughs> It was 150 for the joint mm -hmm. and then it was 180 each, wasn't it, for yeah, I think to move so. to HSBC? But you have to be paid like a certain amount of money to get that. It, yeah, there's loads of different yeah, requirements HSBC for loads of different was, banks. Yeah, it was a strange bank. Yeah, there was 
like a higher tier, wasn't there? Yeah. Printed money, really. So yeah, do that every month. Yeah, that. free money, guys. So one of the most important points and the things that we've learned, and it's a difficult one, it's a bit of pill to swallow, <laughs> but suck up your pride and walk around the house with your mum, your dad, or someone who... Someone that loves to comment. Before. Yeah, someone who... Yeah, find a comment. <laughs> Because you just think, shut up, I'm buying this house, I'll be fine. But they actually give, you know, the amount of gold dust, yeah. don't they? The amount no, of stuff do. you learn. So, you know, we, well, we've got a loft. Great, we can put our stuff up there. Well, you, have you got a loft ladder? Have you got boards? Yeah, no, we, we were like, oh. No, what does that mean? It sounds really, it makes, we're, know, we're making but, ourselves sound really stupid. Well, maybe we are really stupid. Yeah, but maybe. you just don't think about it. I think you just think you move into your house and it's just ready and everything's done. Yeah, definitely. Because even, th even things like blinds on the windows, you know, that's not anything that yeah. would ever enter my thought process. Oh, it entered mine. Just things like, you know, you're going to go spend the first night in your house, like, oh, we don't have any blinds up and we don't have any curtain mm. poles up. How are we going to do this? We are going to have to fork out some money to get blinds in and to be honest it wasn't necessarily money that we already had put aside we were kind of already out of pocket moved in had nothing mm. and in the house and was kind of like oh god we actually need like a couple more grand here just to get the basics and then maybe you know maybe even do even do this really really early so take your mum take your dad and yeah. we'll just look go and look at a few houses years before you're ready and then drop you know just Talk to them, think, okay, I didn't think about that, and that, 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 and you can put it into your budget then. Yeah. So as you're saving, you have a little bit more money yeah. rather than having to wait a year for it to be done. So yeah, another point would again kind of touch and base on the last point. If anything goes wrong in your house, remember that it is your house. It's your responsibility to fix, and it might sound like a dummy's guide. If you've come from a rental, you will probably be heavily reliant on the landlord to fix stuff. Again, it sounds like a stupid point, but it's a real obvious one. That radiator breaks. Who are we going to go to? Things that. I, yeah, that's a really I've good point. Ask, ask yourself if you have, if you don't own your own house, ask yourself the question: If, yeah. if a pipe breaks and where the lamp starts filling with water or the kitchen starts filling with water, where, where's the switch? How do you turn it off? Because I still don't know with this house. It's probably something we should look at. <laughs> yeah, it's your responsibility. I mean, again, this is not not relevant to us at the moment because we're in a new build. We've got a new boiler, but boiler yeah. cover honestly some of my friends they you know yeah, the same. boiler the boiler breaks and they are expensive you know so they can money. be thousands and thousands worth of pounds british gas do a boiler cover so if the boiler dies there's nothing they can help with but it does do uh, each year they come out and give you a sort of evaluation of it so maybe give you a little bit of heads up if it's on the way out but also if it stops working for any reason they do come out and you know get you going again yeah. so again if that happens you know friday night or whatever just before the weekend you know they come out and sort it so another point we wanted to talk about was new build additions now obviously this is only going to apply for people that are looking to buy a new build you know you'll move into your house you'll see the show home it'll look perfect but actually when you get into your house they'll tell you oh it's three and a half thousand for the carpets and if you want that wooden floor and it's in the show home it's an extra one thousand it's you know it, they're all add-ons they're all additions to for you to pay them a little bit more money and um, i think our recommendation would be to look external and go elsewhere and look at other businesses local businesses that can mm -hmm. come in and do that work for you they were expensive you will, additions weren't they Oh my god, so I mean, the pricey. Carpet, you will the carpet, save yourself what a fortune. They, they wanted three and a half grand for the carpet. Yeah, so they wanted three and a half grand for the carpets all upstairs. And I think that was for going up the stairs as well. Um, but we ended up going with carpet right. That would have been so easy just to say, yeah, you know, yeah, get it done. We're moving. The carpet's already in there. Oh yeah, it does streamline the process. I mean, if you've got loads of bloody money, then fair play, crack on and do it. Yeah, because it does it. make it so much easier for you. But... For us, we didn't have that money and we were like, what, three and a half thousand pounds for carpets? But you look at the show home and you just think, oh, I'm paying all of this money for the house. You just, because it's so much money for the property, I think you just assume that those things are included. And something else which sometimes can take years to rectify is bad credit. Check that as early as you can. Make it the first thing you do. Get your credit rating done. See what, if there's anything bad on there, it gives you a bit of time to sort it. The worst case scenario is you, you spend years saving all your money but you've had a few missed payments somewhere down the line years ago for whatever reason. You come and you just can't get a mortgage, you've got all that money, but you're just not ready. They won't give you because you're bad credit. So check it. All the credit rating yeah, agencies, sure. you know, they give you a free month. So just use it, abuse it, see what's good, see what's bad, and work from there. Because, you know, they just will not, mortgages, the banks will not lend if you've got anything bad on there. I didn't have any, like, finance or anything like that in my name, so I wasn't having anything that was kind of building up my credit score. So. If you can get a credit card and put something as basic as like your petrol on it every month or I don't know, your haircuts or something something minor that you won't forget to pay off and you pay off every month, um, yeah, you're onto a winner and it'll really help yeah, out with your credit score. You can set up a direct debit from your regular bank account to pay it off. Yeah, you won't it's even just, notice it. It's, it's just so gone. easy and then, you know, before you know it, that bad credit number will creep up. Yeah. And you'll be in a good position. Oh, careful, you little touch. Come on, darling. 
What's up, my little princess? Do you want to be on the camera and say hello to everyone? So the last point that we kind of spoke about was being in like a nice neighborhood, just doing your research about your neighborhood. I feel like for us, we kind of made sure that we got in the car at different times of the day and like drove around in the morning on like a Saturday, an evening on a Sunday. I think that really kind of gives you a clear picture of the area that you're moving into, um, the neighborhood, what it's like for parking, the kind of people that you're gonna be living with. And yeah, for us, it was a, a major thing to just kind of have a really, really friendly neighborhood. We got a really good feeling when we came around and didn't check the place. People yeah, we just, loved it. You know, the neighbors were just saying hello to us before we even moved in. Do you remember the house we looked at before? We looked at it twice and we thought, yeah, parking's exactly. a bit, parking's a bit tight here, but it yeah. was all right. And then we had a third view in and it must yeah. have been, it must have been about six, seven o'clock at yeah, night. We was just we genuinely didn't think we would get to the viewing because we couldn't get parked it was honestly you could barely drive nightmare. down a road well that's it for today guys <laughs> i hope you've all enjoyed it thanks guys um, please press the like button hit the subscribe button if you want to see more and let's try and get this video to 100 likes because if we do 100 likes i feel like this one should be on screen more because everybody loves it when sean's on screen don't like don't like everybody wants you to do another boyfriend don't takeover like vlog who everyone who i mean four names nikita and donatella that's two. Ashley. That's three. Fergie. <laughs> <It's your dad. laughs> I don't think he wants to see it. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe in this current crazy world. And um, we're actually going away next week. We're going on a little family holiday. So um, we'll be vlogging for you, of course. Oh. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next video.